All right. So just a reminder, office hours this week, we're in week four, not Halloween yet. Um, so Thursday, I'll add the link after class. My head's out of this. So tomorrow, Thursday, I'll be there from 12 to 2. Uh, Thursday evening, 5 to 7. We didn't decide on the Friday evening. What time do you guys want? 4 or 5? I can do two hours. Does they make here? Is they make and come? <laughs> Probably. What do you want then, Tiffany? I'll, I'll be there. I don't, either one works for me. And I like I down think. for four. You want to do four? All right, we'll do four to six on Friday. And then that one's the link, the class link. That's our regular class link. It's actually always been there, but I've never opened it. Uh, and then Saturday morning, again, Saturday morning, I'm in another class. So just come and be patient in the waiting room. Um, and if you come and there's more than like four or five of you, which hopefully there is, um, I will probably, and even doing that tonight, put us put you into rooms with two or three other people in hopes that you will work together um this lab has always been a huge team building thing and it, it works because of the team building so it's not just about you getting it if you truly get it then you can explain it to somebody and once you can explain it to somebody then it truly you've got it um, so if you're in a room with somebody who's struggling and that way i can come into rooms um, and help like three or four of you at a time. Um, so if there's like 10 people, it gets kind of hard hearing questions. It just depends. Um, we'll see how it works out. But anyway, that's for office hours. So going back through this, let me go through the Ionic first. And again, I'm only, oh, the question Olga asked me right before I started recording, I have never been able to figure out how to make notes for this. Um, it's all up here, and it just spontaneously comes out. The notes you have for the cation video have never existed until a couple days ago. So I made the video, and then I sat down at the computer and watched the video and made an outline of the notes. Um, and then when I made the second video, I tried to do the same thing, and I couldn't figure out how to make it look right. So I think if you just kind of take notes, and put it together. And I am recording now, um, but we're gonna go through Ionic and then I'll mention covalent um, a little bit and acids and that other video does it more. It's, it's more you have to practice it. But Ionic, as we just talked about with the homework, is metal and non-metal. And um, Metals are always losing electrons, right? These are the cations. They're gonna form positive cats. Cats have paws. That's why we're all dressed as cations. And non-metals gain electrons. I should say electrons. So they're gonna always be negative. And so they're the anions or anions or ions. All right. And it's an electrostatic attraction. We just did that in your homework. Again, your study sets, and you may have noticed looking at your points, those study set, those points all add up. Your labs, this lab, you should all be able to get a 10 on. Um, and so coming to my office hours and just doing one page at each office hour. So it's a huge advantage just coming for like a half hour to an hour and say, I'm just going to work on this one page today. Um, and it depends on your stamina. Um, so this is just an attraction. And because it's an attraction, it's a ratio. So we always do a ratio of the positives to the negatives. So just as an example, magnesium and chlorine. So predicting the charges, that was what the study set was with. Um, so having those charges, we put it together in the lowest whole number ratio. There's really a thousand magnesiums and 2000 chlorides, or actually billions, a billion and two billion. Um, all right, for the metals, for the cations, there's two types. There are the ones, and I did get into this 
with the video, the first video. We have what are called the fixed charge and the variable charge. The other thing I wanted to mention, and Olga, this goes back to the question you had asked me during our brief break. Um, the lab, the first four pages of the lab is just, well, three pages and one page story. This is all there summarized and condensed down. It's a really dense reading in three pages. Once you practice it, a lot of students found it worked better for them to do the lab and keep referring to stuff, um, trying to read the whole thing at once, but going back and knowing that's there condensed into three pages for you can be helpful. All right, the fixed charge are the ones that were in your study set and worksheet, six. The one A's are plus one. The two A's are always the earth metals, the alkali metals and earth metals, plus one, plus two. And aluminum is plus three. The variable charge is all the other metals. They all have two or more. Most of them have um, like four. They're finding there's lots of charges. So uh, this is where we're going to use the Roman numeral. And for it takes practice, and that is the purpose of the lab. So the first page of the lab can be a little bit rough and slow because it's the first time you're doing it, but it's just that's why there's four pages. Um, the first two pages kind of take you through each of these types of pieces. Uh, so if we did, there's, I'll do a different example than in the other video. When titanium and chlorine combine, there's two ways they can combine. Um, and so to designate it, we say titanium, and then we put a parentheses. So the metals almost all get parentheses, except the 1As, the 2As, and aluminum. No parentheses for them because they're fixed. All the others, you're going to put parentheses. Um, and in the parentheses, and then we say chloride. Assuming we can see. In the parentheses is the metals charge. And the metals charge, you figure out from the compound. So from the ratio and the anion. So Cl is a negative one. Here there's two of them. So that would mean we have a negative two total. So the titanium's a plus two. So titanium two chloride. And I know I'm going fast. Just kind of, you can just listen or you can try and write things down, kind of see how it flows. It's going to take your, your lab gives you lots of practice. Um, and the other video, which is like 52 minutes long, um, it has practice in there too. So again, the CL is still a negative one, but now there's four of them. So this would be negative four. So the titanium is a plus four. So one before five. Um, Roman numerals were fingers holding up one, two, three, uh, and then there's five is a victory sign, and so four is one before five, and six is one after five, and then ten, right. Um, so that's the idea. So either you're given the ratio and you can figure out the number, or you're, you'll be given the number, and from that you can figure out the ratio. It is not necessarily the subscript. So I just happen to use an anion that has a negative one charge. So it worked out that way. I mentioned in the lab and in the other video, silver, zinc, cadmium, and gallium are taught still different ways. Uh, so some people still say they're fixed. 
when I first started teaching here 25 years ago, there were eight of them that were that were like that. Uh, and now we're down to four and they're actually not there anymore. Um, and so I mentioned it in the other video and and because some of you go to tutoring and the tutors are going to say, no, they're fixed. I, I, they're correctly now shown with a Roman numeral, but it doesn't matter to me. Um, and it's easier for you to just think, okay, I'm going to put a Roman numeral with all of these. But that's the idea. That's the cation. So now we're going to talk about the anion. So for the anion, there's two types. This is um, the first type is what's called a monoatomic. And the thing that's nice in the video is you can stop me, write down stuff, go back 30 seconds, listen to that again. Um, so this means one atom type. And that's all that we've done so far. So Cl negative, chloride, oxide, that was in your homework, the sulfide, the nitride, or on your study set. These are going to end with IDE. This is the periodic table. The, anod, the other type are what are called polyatomics. And there is whole charts of them. As I mentioned, the tutoring will say, oh, here, you want this big chart. You can go online and get these huge chart. There's hundreds. There's probably thousands of them. Um, in the lab, I give you eight and then show you how to deviate from that with the charts. Um, so it's kind of trying to simplify it. But an example would be ClO3. So the chlorine and the oxygen are covalently bonded because they are both nonmetals. But if you have a charge, you are an ion. And so you fall in this whole thing that I'm talking about. Um, so the periodic tables, yeah, the one that I kept using um, that my students, was about five years ago, they convinced me to make my periodic tables with these on them. And so they would just use my periodic tables, which have no names um, and would have nothing, and they would all be able to add it to it, which was really fun. But these end with eight and eight. So the second page of the lab gets into them. Um, I'm going to show you like one or two examples with them just to kind of whet your appetite. My goal for all of you is that tonight I recommend you do the first page of the lab and you feel comfortable with that. And if you have the stamina and want to do the next page, then great, you can stay and work on that. Or you can say, I'm going to come to one of your office hours. I'm going to come to all of your office hours and do one page each office hour. The last two pages kind of mix everything up. But let me show you uh, an example of how they would work. So if we had, we can do titanium again. If I gave you titanium 2 and then said chlor 8. So if I give you the name, you're looking at that ending. The ATE, probably where it's glaring, um, and you'll see me do this in the other video. I keep underlining those last three letters. That tells me I'm looking at the polyatomics. And in your lab, I give a, a brief list. And again, you can get that huge list. But to me, that huge list is intimidating um, because it's just huge. And it's like, where's the rhyme and reason here? Um, I talk about in the other video, there's the big five. And I do the whole thing with, you don't have to know Nick. Nick the camel, Nick's here. Um, he's just, it's just a really silly acronym and it's, it just cracks me up that somebody figured this out. So when you have the name, you're gonna write ion. So the cation is your positive. Cats have paws. The two means titanium is a plus two. And then the chlor eight, means you look at your polyatomic list. What you could do, and I can scan in, I have to go to school and get one that's not written all over. Um, I can, and I can put it there for you, is my periodic table they've always used, which has the A numbers and then has like my little polyatomics and everybody did great with those. Um, and so chlorate would be the eight means it's a polyatomic. Again, I write my L cursive 
and has a negative one. Let's do that better. So something else I talk about in the video, what really, this was like a game changer for me as a teacher, <laughs> uh, is I started putting them in parentheses. The CL and the three oxygens are a package. They all go together, they stay together. And it really helps students to put see them with parentheses. I talked about that. My son took my class last year, just like sat in on it. Um, and so now when he's really taking chemistry, he got in that habit and he got it marked wrong. But he got everyone right. That was the only thing he got marked wrong. Um, so you would have a negative one and a positive two. And once you get through working with the lab, you do start seeing it. And then your study set for next week, the hope is, is that the study set won't seem so bad. Um, but it's the same idea as putting the magnesium and chlorine. The other thing I wanted to mention, and I want to talk about covalent for just a few minutes, um, is because this is a ratio, you never ever, you should write this like in red, never ever use di, tri, et cetera. So you never say titanium dichlorate. That's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. Um, like the titanium chlorides that I did previously, you would never say titanium dichloride or magnesium dichloride. So no counting prefixes is what I say. And the reason why is because it's a ratio. You don't have two chlorates. You have two million to one million or two billion to one billion. So it's a ratio. And so we just, and you always get it, the ratio comes from the charges. The first page of your lab has you that you're putting charges and you're working with the variable. The second page then brings in the polyatomics. And this is, it's an evening class. It's the fourth week. You guys had a test this week. You did amazing. We're over that big hump of the first test. We're cruising. You're all going to make it. If you do all the work and you're sincere, I will get you through. And I have seen amazing things happen, too. I've seen people's scores um, go up because the first test is, in a lot of ways, the most stressful because you don't know what to expect. Um, and so we're getting familiar with each other. We get to dress up in this class. Our dogs get to be in the class. Our cat. All right, that was real quick. Is there any questions? In the other video, I go through it a little bit longer. And I think it was a little bit neater writing on the board because I did it two or three times before I did it right. So you didn't get to see the first two cuts of the taping. All right, and I had lots of special students in that class. Like all of you, highly cherished. So I'm gonna talk about covalent now. Covalence is a type of bond. Does anybody remember how you know you have covalent? Am I aware there's a glare? Do I have to move like that way? Or is it good enough? Covalent bonds are the two plus nonmetals, and then they share the electrons. Tatum's got it. Yeah. So next week, you should all be where you're like that. You just um, know if you see it's a nonmetal with another nonmetal. So two or more. Let's say it like that. Two or more nonmetals. Uh, something I talk about with the other video. We're going to only do binary compounds. So binary means everything has two parts. So with ionic, you're going to have a cation and anion. With covalent, we're only going to deal with two. We're not going to go into or more. 
organic chemistry, biochemistry, in the real world, there is the or more. Um, some of my bonus emails, actually, I don't know if I've done those with you because we hadn't learned about compounds. Um, but some of when we added up the masses, you saw many different elements in there. And they were carbon, right? All those mole stuff we did, they were carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. They were all covalent because they were all non-metals. Um, another thing before I forget, I know I forgot to mention this in the other video. These are also called molecules. So the term molecule specifically means you're dealing with something that has covalent means a covalent bond. And the other thing actually Tatum correctly said is they share electrons. So this is the analogy I said is your shoulder is connecting your arm to your body. These are, tr this is the only true bond. Everything else is an attraction, everything else. Next week we do a lot with electrostatic attractions are extremely important. This just means, this attraction just means positives and negatives attract. Um, here they're actually sharing, they are stuck together. Uh, so they're like Siamese twins. You need um, serious operation to separate them. So this is where we do the counting prefixes. And what I mean by that, the lab, the first, the top of the first page of the lab, has them there. Uh, you guys all know CO2 is carbon dioxide. So the dye tells you there's two oxygens. That's what I mean by counting prefix. It also tells you you have a molecule. You will never see that with ionic because they're a ratio. They're an attraction. Um, and so you you tell me how many are in there. Uh, and you're going to recognize you do it that way because you see non-metals. You don't see a metal. You don't see sodium or titanium um, or iron or lead. All right. That was real quick with that because that's at the top of the first page. I want to mention acids just for like a minute in case. There's some of you who decide to hang out and get the first two pages. So everyone always tells me, I don't like acids, they're so confusing. And that is because you just did so much. We just did your study set was dealing with the fixed charges, just getting the charges, predicting charges. Now we're adding in the variable ones and putting them together and, and taking them apart and the covalent. And then we add in the polyatomics. This is a lot of information. You're learning a whole language. You guys learned the alphabet. Your first midterm, that was the alphabet. This is the chemist alphabet. Now we're putting it all together into words. And then we play with those words. And then the next midterm, after that, in the month, we write sentences out, which are chemical reactions, um, which is pretty cool. So everybody always says, I don't understand acids at all. And then they do great with them because they do get it. But you're all tired right now. Your brains are going, there's too much information. What is the key thing of acids? How do you know you're going to have an acid? Hydrogen? Yes. You're going to see hydrogen plus non-metal. Who said that? I did. I don't know who's I. <laughs> oh, okay. It's my screen is totally different from all of you. I get all these bonus points you guys get tonight. So you're gonna see hydrogen, and it is actually a hydrogen ion, and that hydrogen ion is a proton, which is why it's lost its whole castle around it. It's now it's a little proton. So these guys burn. If you get acid on you, it burns. Uh, they're extremely useful. They use them for etching, for everything. So like HCl, HClO3. Um, and in the lab, there's a whole page that talks about how to name them. So when you get to the acid part, you can be like, I can go watch. It's at the end, probably like last 10 minutes of the video. Or you can say, I'm going to take a break and read this page. 
but to recognize acids, the key is they will always, in this class, they will always start with a hydrogen. In organic and biochemistry, we get a little bit more advanced. When you write the name, you would say blah, 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 acid. The name will always have the word acid at the end. So the hydrogen at the beginning or the word acid at the end means caution. If we were really in lab, so in two weeks, when we go back into lab and we start really doing fun um, experiments, you would see a lot of the labs would have a caution because we'd be doing something with an acid because they're really useful. Um, but yeah, so when you get to that part, there's a page in the lab you can read. If you're somebody who likes reading, that works better for you. Or you can say, I'm good for today. I'll watch the video and kind of take notes. And again, back to Olga's question, I tried to make notes and I guess the lab already has it all typed out. And you just need to do the lab. And unless there's a question, I'm gonna stop. If I can figure out how. Oh.